From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Friday the 8th of April. Good afternoon. Today we're going to be discussing some of the biggest stories, including Katanji Brown-Jackson's confirmation to the US Supreme Court and the potential for further sanctions on Russia. We'll also be answering today's big question, why is Pakistan having another no-confidence vote? As well as discussing the UN sending heavy vehicles to Ukraine and if this could become a slippery slope toward more confrontation. But first, let's talk about Russia's suspension from the Human Rights Council. Yesterday, Russia was suspended from the United Nations Human Rights Council over reported gross and systemic violations and abuses of human rights in Ukraine following a vote of the UN General Assembly. 93 countries voted in favour of the suspension, 58 abstained, and 24, including Russia, China, Syria, Iran and Ethiopia, voted against. The UN Human Rights Council is a 47-member body responsible for strengthening the promotion and protection of human rights. Its members are elected for staggered three-year terms, and before the vote, Russia was in its second year. After the vote, though, Russia announced that they decided to quit the council, which was rather convenient, and Ukraine's ambassador remarked, you do not submit your resignation after you're fired. This is a historic moment, though, because only one other country has ever been suspended. That was Libya, who was voted off the council in 2001 because of violence against protesters committed by Gaddafi's forces. One unintended consequence of Putin's invasion of Ukraine is the way that it's united Europe. Countries are now working together to figure out how they can best sanction the Russian president, and this is no more evident than in the European Parliament itself. In a vote yesterday, the Parliament agreed to a resolution calling for an immediate full embargo on Russian imports of coal, oil, nuclear fuel and gas. In the vote, 513 MEPs voted in favour, 22 against, and 19 abstained. It's important to note here that the resolution itself was non-binding, and as such, there's currently no full embargo in place. Irrespective though, the resolution sends the strongest message to Ukraine about how much the EU supports them, at least according to the Speaker of the European Parliament. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your everyday routine. Or you can just search for us in your podcast app to listen along. Yesterday, in a historic vote, the US Senate confirmed Judge Katanji Brown Jackson to the Supreme Court, making her the first black woman to ever be elevated to the court. The 53-47 vote saw three Republicans, Senators Collins, Mikowski and Romney, join all 50 Democrats in voting to confirm her. So Jackson is now set to replace Justice Stephen Breyer when he retires from the Supreme Court at the end of June, but her confirmation will not alter the makeup of the 6-3 conservative court, as Breyer, her soon-to-be predecessor, was also on the liberal wing of the court. But by replacing the 83-year-old, they've solidified the seat as a liberal one for years to come. It also marks a consequential achievement for President Biden, whose recent legislative endeavours have faltered in Congress. Let's move to science next, where a big leap forward has been revealed by researchers in Cambridge, who have managed to de-age skin cells. In particular, they've succeeded in rejuvenating a 53-year-old woman's skin cells to that of a 23-year-old. This development could have a lot of real-world uses too, and it could be used to treat diseases that are made worse with age, such as diabetes, heart disease, and neurological disorders. According to Melanie Wellam, who is the executive chairman of the Biotechnology and Biological Sciences Research Council, we could build on today's development, and if new therapies could rejuvenate immune systems, we could boost people's response to vaccination as well as their ability to fight infections. There are clearly then a number of uses for such rejuvenation technology, so let's just hope it does all end up being possible. Finally then, over the last few days we've seen that the British Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, has come under fire for his apparent hypocrisy. The TLDR is that his wife claims that she has non-DOM status, meaning that she would have avoided about £4.5 million in tax over the last year. As we all know, the cost of living crisis is still ongoing, and more people than ever are struggling to make ends meet. 
So some perceive this tax avoidance as immoral, but others accept that it's unfair to attack Rishi Sunak over the actions of his wife. One such critic of the critics is Rishi Sunak himself, who has argued that to smear my wife to get at me is awful. For their part, Labour seem to think that the issue is fair game, going as far to say that if Akshata Murthy did reduce her tax bill this way, it would be breathtaking hypocrisy. But I'm interested to hear what you think in the comments below. By the way, in yesterday's extended daily briefing, Ben and Zach sat down to discuss their thoughts on this issue, so you can check that out on Nebula. Regardless, that's the end of our first week back on The Daily Briefing, and I hope you've enjoyed it. If you don't mind, before you end the weekend, can I ask a quick favour? Firstly, if you haven't already, please subscribe and ring the bell so we can keep you informed every day, and you can show the algorithm how much you like us. Secondly, if you know anyone, especially young people, that would benefit from knowing more about the news and the world around them, then please share us with them. Your word of mouth support is ultimately invaluable. And finally, if you've enjoyed the show, consider signing up to Nebula. Every day this week, we posted extended versions of the show over there, totaling an extra 50 hours this this week alone. We mention Nebula so much because we want to keep this showing going long term, and that's only possible if we have your support and if the business model makes sense. If you sign up today, you'll get everything you've just seen ad-free. Plus, today's big question, why is Pakistan having another vote of no confidence? As well as Zach and I discussing if the West's armament of Ukraine is a slippery slope to conflict escalation. So if you want to support the channel and get an even more extensive briefing every day, then you'll want to sign up. And there's good news. Our friends at CuriosityStream, the streaming service with some of the world's best documentaries, is offering a deal whereby you can get both platforms, CuriosityStream and Nebula, for less than $15 a year. That's all the documentaries you could want on CuriosityStream, and then more TLDR on Nebula, including the extended briefing, other full exclusive TLDR videos, and, well, it's always ad-free, too. Click the link below to get both services for less than $15 a year and support the channel. 